Now with all the hours I've been putting in, uh, just with like a little bit of study and also playing online, it's probably the most confidence I've had going into a tournament since before the WSOP started. And uh, if you guys have watched my last couple videos from the end of the WSOP, you probably know that uh, my confidence wasn't at an all time high towards the end. But that being said, uh, I'm pretty excited. And at this point I am almost late for this tournament, so I've got to run. So I decided rather than doing a bunch of main event hands right now, I want to at least get chronologically caught up and uh, tell you guys about the Potomac Poker Open that I played at MGM National Harbor. And I did play several events, not sure if I'm going to go over all of them, but I'm going to start out telling you about event number one, which I played. And it was a $365 tournament, uh, I think it had a 50k guarantee, something like that, and it smashed it. So. Um, pretty cool event, a little bit turbo-ish, 30-minute uh, levels, 25k starting stack, and yeah, let's just get into the hands. Oh, and by the way, as a quick reminder, September 30th is going to be the meetup game at Maryland Live at 2 p.m. Facebook event down below. You can RSVP there. Please do, and uh, let me know if you're going to be needing a hotel of any kind so that I can uh, get some details, get rooms locked up. Uh, if you want to stay at Maryland Live, because by the way, they have a brand new hotel. The only other reminder is that I just got back from San Francisco, and I am next going to be at Foxwoods on the 8th, 9th of September uh, for their Moneymaker Tour stop. So I'll be there for just a couple of days, and then I'll be chilling in Boston with my family uh, for several days after that, and uh, just getting in some quality time. So now let's get into the PPO hands. With blinds at 100, 200, and 25 ante, I'm sitting on about 21k, uh, which is a bit below starting stack at this point. There's a limp under the gun, I'm in middle position with pocket kings, and I decided to bump it up to 700, which at this stage of the tournament is actually probably a little bit small compared to what I would normally do. Uh, the hijack, the big blind, and under the gun all call, so we are going very multi-way to this flop, which is queen 8, 6, 2 tone. So it checks to me, I end up betting 1300 and actually both the hijack and the big blind call. So still three ways now, uh, heading to a turn. The turn is the ace of diamonds, which I didn't feel was that great of a card because there are ace high flush draws out there. However, I thought that there was enough other flush draws, enough other draws, and a lot of queen x that might still call one more bet here that I decided to bet 4000. However, they both call again. And the river is the seven of clubs, which is a pretty bad card for obvious reasons. The big one checks to me. I clearly check here. Don't really have any other option. And the hijack also checks. So big blind actually has queen seven of diamonds. So he needed the river to beat me with two pair. And uh, the hijack has a flush, but didn't bet it because it's just a nine high flush with the nine six of clubs and I lose to both players. So betting while I'm ahead, checking while I'm behind, not super upset about the outcome, but it definitely sucks to lose such a big pot uh, with kings to two players and not beat either of them. In this next hand, under the gun limps, uh, I'm in middle position with pocket sevens. I just use the over limp, which uh, I, I definitely don't have to do. I could, I could definitely raise this up, but I do limp this time. Hijack limps as well, and the cutoff now raises to 725. The button, the big blind, under the gun, and myself all call. Oh, and uh, the hijack who's behind me also calls as well. The flop comes pretty good for us. It is 874 two tone, and it checks to me. Now, I definitely think that I could be leading out here, and I probably should be most of the time, but I felt at the time that. Um, the raise coming from the cutoff was probably going to be pretty strong and that he would bet all of his over pairs here at least one time and let me put in a check raise. But that doesn't happen and it ends up just checking around. The turn is now another seven. The last seven in the deck, giving me four of a kind. 
Under the Gun actually leads out here for a thousand, which is just obviously music to my ears. It's not a very big bet relative to the size of the pot, but I think we just have to call here. Um, a raise is not going to get called super wide. The cutoff, who is the initial raiser, actually ends up calling behind as well, uh, which is a little surprising because I thought he would bet all of his overpairs on the flop. Seems likely as some sort of a draw, um, and it seems reasonably likely that under the gun has some sort of a draw too, uh, given that I hold all the sevens in my hand and on the board. The river is now the ace of hearts, which brings in a backdoor flush draw. Under the gun checks it over to me, and I have to pick a bet size here. I, I think we could sometimes go for a check raise and hope that the cutoff has improved to a heart flush, but there are going to be times when he has spades that have missed, and he's just going to check it back, but we would have gotten a bet out of under the gun. So I think given that we are three-handed here and I get two ranges that have potentially improved to flushes, I should just go for a bet. So I bet 3k and the cutoff just calls, uh, which was a little surprising to me because he shows king nine of hearts. And one of the reasons why I kind of liked betting in the moment was I thought that a flush might still raise me. <laughs> Unfortunately, he does just call, but we do get to show down quads and take it down. In this next hand, we are jumped up a few blind levels here to the 400-800 level. There is a 100 ante in play, and uh, I have about 25k in my stack. The button opens to 2k, and I'm in the big blind with king jack offsuit, but it's red. Uh, the flop comes king 6 5 all spades. So nice to flop top pair, kind of weird to have it be on a monotone board where I, I don't have a flush draw. I check. The button now bets 3,500, and I decided to just call um, mostly because his bet size was so large uh, relative to the size of the pot, and I, I don't think raising really accomplishes much other than mostly getting it in against better hands or hands we're flipping against anyway. However, even with just calling, there's a ton of cards we don't want to see, and one of them hits the turn. It is the two of spades, so the fourth spade on board, and when I check it over to him, he bets 5k. It's going to be pretty hard here to really see showdown, so I just let it go. Um, I think if we were on the river, you could definitely make a case for finding a bit of a hero call here against someone who might be capable of bluffs. But on the turn, when there's a decent chance we'll have to face two more bets, and the 5k is worth more than 20% of our remaining stack, I think it's very reasonable to just let it go here. So sitting on about 20k here and still at the same blind level, under the gun and under the gun plus one actually both limp. I'm under the gun plus two with pocket queens and I bump it up to 3.5k. Pretty big raise, but based on how the table's been playing so far today, I think it's reasonable. Folds all the way around to under the gun plus one, who was the second limper, and he makes the call. The flop comes queen seven deuce, so we are just flopping sets today, right and left, uh, I guess relatively speaking. And uh, when he checks it over to me, I think I have a sort of mandatory check back, even though there is a flush draw on board. It's a pretty disconnected board, so there's not straight draws. Uh, I have top set, not middle set, so there's not going to be very many top pairs available. And uh, the queen is also of suit on the board, so it's not like he can even have top pair and a flush draw. When the turn comes the five of clubs and he checks it to me again, I do think we need to put out some small bets now and just try to get two streets. Um, it's pretty unlikely at this point that the river is going to be something that uh, improves a hand. Uh, it's more just hoping that they might bluff turn or uh, you know take some sort of a stab at it. When he doesn't do that, I think we are kind of obligated to just bet. So I throw out a small bet, uh, same size I made it pre-flop, 3.5k, uh, but we just get the fold and uh, get to take it down. Still at 400, 800, I've got 25K in my stack and I'm on the button with 7.6 offsuit and I open it up to 2K. Uh, wouldn't always open this, but in this field, I think I'm gonna be opening a little bit wider um, when it's unopened to me on the button. So I do open to 2K and the big line calls and has 35K behind. The flop comes 6.3.2 and I have top pair with basically no kicker on a two-tone board. The big blind actually leads out for 1200, which I definitely didn't think was super strong. Uh, this sizing on this board texture is definitely not indicative of a super strong hand. The only exception would maybe be something like the flopped straight with 4.5 or 
you know, maybe especially four or five with a diamond draw. So when when he leads that, I don't think I have the worst hand pretty much ever. Now that being said, a lot of the hands that he could lead this way might be uh, things like ace deuce or ace three, things like, um, you know, three, four suited to have a gut shot with middle pair. And I think there's some small merit to raising, um, but I think we often just blast off most of the worst hands and create a kind of tricky spot later on in the hand potentially. It's true that flush draws are also possible where he wants to set his price, um, but I just don't really know. So with such a weak hand in my range that does still have showdown value, I decided to just call. The turn now comes the Jack of Hearts, and he sizes up a little bit here to 3.5k. I think for most of the reasons why I wanted to just call the flop, I want to just call the turn here. Uh, so, so I call, and we go heads up to a river, which is a queen of diamonds, and he now leads for 5k, which is very unfortunate because obviously the third diamond coming in is not what we really wanted to see. Uh, we definitely wanted a little bit more of a brick. But that being said, uh, I think it's kind of good because now I don't think he's going to bet a third street with anything other than a flush. I think he's just going to be a little too scared that I can have a flush. And based on how he's been sizing it, it's entirely possible that I could have a flush the way we've played this handout. So I decided to call and he just shows king deuce with uh, the king of diamonds, um, but no flush, just bottom pair. Uh, kind of just decided to go for three bets maybe protectionish on the flop and then kind of trying to get me to fold on the turn and river uh, not really sure what his thought process was there but i do get to rake this one in uh, with the third pair call down so so that's always good in this next hand we are now at the 501k level with a 100 ante and i've got about 33k in my stack i'm in the hijack with king 10 of diamonds and i open it up to 2500 the cutoff and the button both call and the big blind gives us a little bit of some bad news and jams 14.4k. I have some options here. I think folding would be reasonable, but with the price we're getting and the dead money that I kind of assume is behind us, I didn't really feel like folding was going to be best. Uh, I thought calling was probably okay, but I would rather try to isolate a little bit more and get some of the people behind me out of the pot a little more effectively. So I ended up rejamming. Unfortunately, the cutoff, who has 4.9k more than the big blind, calls all in for less. And that's definitely, you know, a spot where warning bells go off and they go off a little bit too late. The button folds and sure enough, the cutoff has a much better hand than anticipated with pocket queens. And the big blind has ace five of clubs. So... We're not in horrible shape, we have one over, but not in the best of shape, and a board of bricks just sees me ship a pretty large portion of my stack and uh, leave me with quite a few big blinds remaining. So following this hand, you know, I've got somewhere around uh, eight to 10 bigs, and I jam twice pretty much in a row uh, with pocket fours and then pocket sixes, but I just get those through and uh, chip up to about 18K. But it's not until another blind level later that I get another spot to put some chips in. It is the 600-1200 level now with a 200 ante. And this is a level where I want to be making some moves. Um, the ante is very large compared to the big blind, which means there's more dead money in the middle than normal. And it makes shoving a wider range more profitable. So with 13.5k in my stack, uh, there's an open to 2500 from a super active middle position player. Uh, this guy is in a lot of pots, he is raising a lot of pots, and uh, I, I just think that he is going to be a lot wider here in MP than uh, he's supposed to be, like from a theory perspective. That being said, he has been getting a lot of folds from people, and I have not been active for quite a few orbits at this point. So when it folds to me in the small line with pocket deuces, I just decided to jam it all in here. I only have a little bit over 10 bigs, which always makes it a bit scary to jam a weak hand because... It's hard to actually have enough fold equity, but I figured against this exact player, uh, it was going to be okay because we were going to have some combination of getting him to fold the very weak hands that are actually flipping against us, which is a, a huge win, um, but still leave him behind with a lot of hands 
uh, that are flipping against us that will still call. And with the dead money in the middle, uh, that kind of just makes it a slam dunk. So it folds back around to middle position who opened, and uh, he he kind of shakes his head and gives a little bit of a speech about how this is probably a really bad call, and uh, does eventually put in the crying call with the queen ton offsuit. The board runs out 965 queen brick. So his crying call is good enough, and obviously against this exact hand, he had plenty of equity, uh, but unfortunate kind of the way it happened, like he was super close to folding, but decided to call, and uh, and then, you know, we lose the flip. So out of event one, and on to the next one, like I said, I did play several events here at the PPO, and uh, I'm not sure exactly which ones I'm going to be going over, uh, but the next one should be coming at you guys soon. And uh, then I'll be seeing you guys at Foxwoods and then Maryland Live soon after that. So remember, if you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. Leave me a comment down below letting me know what you thought. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Just do it. It's free and uh, you'll know when I put out more videos. If you want to know in real time, just hit that bell icon that is next to the subscribe button once you hit it. And share this video with your friends. I don't know why I'm gesturing so much today, guys. I guess I'm just excited. Uh, back from San Francisco, feeling good, back on the vlog grind, and uh, with new graphics to boot. So let me know what you guys think. Subscribe, etc., 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 and I'll see you in the next video.